All right, so the only review I've gotten on Bruno is from our own Chris Stanley, and you're telling me not as solid. Definitely not. Not as solid as Borak, even though it did a little more money at the box office. You don't think it's going to have the same kind of shelf life? Probably not, no. Because, I mean, just before, I was a big fan of the Ali G show or whatever, and he's just too popular to get the right people in there. To no one's him. ever going to get fooled by him again. Exactly. I'm, ju- I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to go by Glad's review that it uh, reinforces negative gay stereotypes. Is there another type? There could be positive gay stereotypes, I guess, but there shouldn't be stereotypes at all. Shouldn't even be positive ones? No, there shouldn't be stereotypes of anybody. Why not? People should just be people. So you shouldn't be able to look at anyone and think, uh, let's say, hey, that guy's got the body of a dancer. That's wrong to do. Well, yeah, it's, 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 uh, he could be a great dancer. You know, if you're talking about him individually, that's fine. So you would never group people for any reason? I try not to. Here is uh, Adam. Adam in California, you're in of us. What up, Ronnie B? How you doing, buddy? Great. Hey, man. My wife and I went to that movie in like half the theater left halfway through the movie because they just couldn't stand it anymore. I loved it. It was hilarious, but I don't know what people are expecting after seeing Borat. They were offended, you know? Well, it's one thing to be offended. It's another thing to think something's not funny. Just because... Uh, I mean, there are, without a doubt, uh, offensive things that are still funny. You know, you could laugh at a pedophile joke and go like this. Oh, that was awful. That really crossed the fucking line for me. But you could still sit there and laugh at it. Um, Unlike Fez, who just doesn't see stereotypes. You don't see him at all. No, I try not to see stereotypes. I don't do it. Fez Watley is willing to leave here tonight, walk into a bar in East New York, be left there by us, sit, have drinks for three hours, and then call a cab and come home. Fez Watley willing to walk through Harlem 2 o'clock in the morning. Why? No stereotypes. Well, there's no, uh, you can't stereotype individuals, but that still doesn't make certain areas safe. Well, why would, the, why would you stereotype the individuals who live there? Those people are citizens of the United States. Mm hmm. Um, above, uh, you know, above any reproach. They're not wanted by the police. There's no reason why you shouldn't feel safe to go into that neighborhood tonight. And you will to prove a point. I give you all the credit in the world. Uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. We will uh, take a break here. Uh, Fez, what time are you going into Harlem tonight? Two I, o'clock? I, no, I don't want to go into Harlem and sit Why? at a bar. Why? Because it's not safe sometimes. That What you are doing is stereotyping. No, I'm and, talking and about I, facts. And I, well, these are facts. The facts is stereotyping can be shorthand. All you're doing is shorthand. So you're saying the facts are blacks are more dangerous than whites. No, I'm, I'm saying the fact is some crime, ha- more crime happens uptown. Because there are black people living there. Well, I guess that's who's committing the crimes, but. That seems to me like stereotyping. That is a stereotype. Now, why would Earl? I'll I'll make the same deal with Earl, and he'll do it. Are you saying you're more prejudiced than Earl? No, I'm not more prejudiced than Earl. I don't feel I'm prejudiced at all. Then you'll go into this bar tonight. But no, you have to. Uh, you have to would think you go safety into, first. Would you go into an all black bar in Midtown? Um, I'm not sure. I would need to know the bar's reputation. I know some old black clubs downtown, Chelsea, too, we can go to. Perfect. Um, It's very, very interesting. Would you go into an all-biker bar? No, I would not go into an all-biker bar. Why? Because I would be worried about my safety. And you don't see that as stereotyping? 
No, the man who hates stereotyping. That's fucking exactly stereotyping. I don't think that's stereotyping. That's well, you're not seeing people as individuals. You are seeing a reputation. But all we have a Hell's Angels club right on the Lower East Side. I'd be glad to. And by the way, Fez, uh -huh. that's the fucking definition of stereotyping. What? Just wh exactly what you're doing. To say there's a group of people there and those people could be dangerous is exactly what fucking stereotyping does. Because you're not seeing um, uh, individuals. Uh, Joe, Joe, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Todd, out in the Castro district in San Francisco, they don't like black people there because they cause problems. And that ain't a stereotype. That's a fact. So there, Todd. My name is Fez. Hey, Joe. Six, six, run, zero, Fez. Uh, 866 Ron Zero Fez. You surprised me, Fezzy. And now maybe I'm thinking this Bruno movie might be the funniest movie ever. Oh, don't go see that. Don't bother. Why not? Because all it does is play on bad stereotype jokes. Now, you haven't seen the movie. No, I have not. Yet you feel okay to judge it. Yes, I feel okay. Yes. How can you? Because I'm going by what Glad said, and they and members of Glad have seen it. What if Glad told you to jump off the fucking bridge? Would you do it? No, what I would not. What if Glad told you to jump off the fucking bridge? What the fuck is Glad anyway? Glad is the Anti-Defamation League for uh, Gay and Lesbians. Never heard of them. Never heard of them. Um, here is uh, Dan in Ohio. You're on Ronnie Fez. Buddies. Yeah. Hey, um, Ronnie, are you being a little hard on my man Fez? Mm. With the stereotyping? Maybe I am. Well, I'm against stereotyping, too, and I know Fez is, and it's like, you know what? Him being scared to go uptown is not really his fault because all fags are scaredy cats. I, that is a pro I have a real problem with that word. And I, Fez, just uh -huh. give me a fucking second here. Right. Let me defend you. Yeah. I despise mm -hmm. with every fucking cell in my body the word scaredy. It doesn't even make sense. What about the other it's word? It's just a scared cat. You're a scared cat. Scaredy makes us sound gay. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Eric, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron, how you doing? Yeah. Um, I seem to see that Fez is also uh, racist against scaredy cats. What, what's going on now? And also, maybe Fez is right. If he doesn't want to go up to Harlem or if he's afraid of certain people, his, you know, maybe he's had experiences with it in the past. Right, but not with those individual people. Now, why? Now, there's probably not anyone listen who disagrees with Fez. But let's be honest here. It's still stereotyping. It's still saying, I'm going to use the shorthand here and judge these people and judge this place rather then go up there and be totally open to it. Here is Michelle. Michelle, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hi, guys. Um, yeah. I took a class in college years ago, and the professor of the psychology class had a really interesting spin on stereotyping, saying that it was actually a good thing to have in human nature because it protects you. It absolutely protects you. You're not relearning the same thing every time you leave your house. Now, is it foolproof? Absolutely not. But we do stereotype. We do it for shorthand reasons. Fez is stereotyping bars I haven't even picked out yet. I've just created a scenario. Uh -huh. I haven't named an individual bar or the individual people who will be at that bar. And Fez is telling me it's unsafe. And he's doing that because... He's either personally experienced something or read something that he is going to hold his truth. Something from the past to say, this type of thing doesn't make sense for me to fucking go into. But I still don't think that's stereotyping. Absolutely it is. Because all it takes is one individual to attack me or commit a crime against me. I wouldn't think that the entire group would attack me. But you think someone in that group would. Now, that would be fucking to you. That's okay. Now, if I said, if you are looking for a babysitter and you have a 
seven-year-old boy you want babysitting. Uh-huh. Don't use any gay. Don't let a gay babysit that boy. You would be frustrated by that. Yes. And yet, to a lot of people, it would make a lot of sense because if anyone was going to abuse that fucking boy, they'd think it would come out of that group. It's only when your group gets logged in do you feel the full fucking weight of stereotype. Um, uh, here, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I understand what you're saying. For you, to see it on the other side, safety first, my friend. When someone else says safety first, but it attacks a group that you tend to care about, it seems hurtful. Mike and PA, you're on Fez. Hey, Fezzy, I wanted to ask you, uh, what reinforces negative gay stereotypes more than the gay pride parade? They're walking around with their asses out and giant green dildos. I mean, it, what does Glad have to say about the gay pride parade? Did you go to the pride parade? Did you see a gr oh, giant green dildo? I've, I've been on to TV every the, single year. Everybody knows what it is. I, I've been to the, the, the fucking uh, gay pride parade. And to say that that doesn't push stereotypes is absolutely wrong. I saw 60 fucking floats all playing Mighty Real with guys in short shorts fucking dancing. It really promoted that type of thing a lot more than any political agenda. And to say that, to disagree with Fez, then you'd only be lying. I would say that it promotes freedom of expression and it's people being exactly who they feel open to being. But they all seem to feel to be the same exact way. Which would be a stereotype. Well, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a theme on a float, sure. But every float, every float has to have the same theme. Boogie. Uh, here's uh, Cody. Cody, you're on my face. I think that it would be a good idea for you to get maybe 10 to 20 words or maybe names of certain <laughs> music groups or cultural cliques or whatever and use them as Fez for a word association thing and see which ones he might pick words that are stereotypical. My problem is he'll stop dropping the M-bomb. That's Fez Watley. I would Will you not. go to Harlem tonight? No, I am not going to Harlem tonight. No. Pussy. Hmm. Would you go to Harlem, into that bar, if you know, only knew that the people are going to be in there with Franklin and his family and Earl and his family? Well, yes, I would. Why? Because then I know it's safe. So you don't stereotype people that you know. You only stereotype people that you don't know. No, I don't stereotype anyone. I, stereotype, I could stereotype, uh, maybe if I'm guilty of stereotyping anything, it's a neighborhood where crime happens. It's an actual area of a city. So uh, why, didn't you, why wouldn't you go to the all-black bar that we have for you downtown? Because, uh, you know, I don't feel safe. Would you go to an all-white bar downtown that we picked out for you? Um, Would you go to a gay club downtown that we picked out for you? I, th I It depends on how late it is, but um, yeah, I would go. I don't know if I would feel welcome in some of these bars. but Like the biker bar or an all-black bar. I don't know if I would feel because welcome. Because they only like their own, own, their own kind. They, that's how those people are. They only like their own kind. That would be them stereotyping. But you, we haven't even met these people yet. So you're, choose, you're accusing them of stereotyping, as for right now, these people aren't even real yet. They're not even real. And yet you've already said they stereotype people like you. This is what we do. We fucking use shorthand. Nothing wrong with it. To be totally honest with you, you're prejudiced, Fez. You're prejudging until you get new facts I don't see it as a negative thing. I really don't. Prove to me. Prove to me. And that's why you're not afraid of Earl or Franklin, because they have proven to you friendship and, and safety. Um, here is uh, Billy in Georgia. You're on Fez. Hey, Ron and Fez. Yeah. Hey, uh, Fez, I was just wondering, would you go with Earl on Sunday morning to an all-black 
uh, Baptist African Church. I will answer this. Earl has asked uh, Fez to do this for nine years and uh, has never once uh, taken a bump on it. Here is Wild. Wild in Arizona. You're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, Ronnie, uh, what's the difference between a stereotype and a pattern, man? Well, Fez is claiming that he is uh, judging Harlem on its crime patterns, which obviously he doesn't have sitting in front of him. No, I don't. There's no way for him to uh, know any of this information. The only thing that he's pattering on is, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, Fez, your own fears. Your own fears. Um, right, that one individual might not take a liking to me. That not, may not care for me to be in a place where they regularly go. Right. That's called stereotyping. You're putting your safety above um, giving other people the benefit of the doubt. And that's completely understandable. And that's why people get a little nervous about uh, gay teachers. Because it's their kids in there. And they say, I'd rather be wrong. I'd rather be wrong and know that my kid's safe. People have a tendency to do stuff like that. Um, all right, 866 Ron Zero Fez. 866. Um, Fez, some big comic book news. They finally have picked a Green Lantern. Yeah, it's Ryan Reynolds. Um, I do not like the choice of this Green Lantern. First of all, I think he's a little bit too jokey to be Hal Jordan. I think he's a little bit too goofy to play the guy that is the Green Lantern. Secondly, he already has a superhero he's doing. It's Deadpool. He did it in the Wolverine movie. He's getting his own Marvel comic superhero movie. I hate it when they let someone play more than one superhero character. Why? Because you, you really, with the, with the superhero movies, you really have to suspend disbelief. I mean, you got to work at it and try to put yourself in a comic book mindset. When you see Hugh Jackman as Wolverine and Van Helsing, another superhero, it takes you out of it. It doesn't help that, that Cyclops is also Perry White's nephew in Superman. It just it doesn't help with the illusion at all. I don't well, like it. Clint Eastwood always played different cowboys. John Wayne always played different cowboys. Jimmy Cagney and Humphrey Bogart played different gangsters. If the movie is good, why wouldn't you just suspend disbelief then? I mean, it is always their job to, to make you go, hey, I'm willing to believe that these aren't actors, but this is a, you know, a true story. So I don't see why, you know, superheroes would be any more different than any other kind of genre. Like I said, I had to sit and watch that fucking Christian Bale back to back in movies. They put him in every third movie now. Yeah. I'm going to get a little tired of Christian Bale. So I don't think he should be Batman and John Connor. That bothers me. But you act like, he, well, why wouldn't it bother you that he played any other role? Why wouldn't you act like... It bothers me that anybody isn't just plays one role and then goes away. Because the, the superhero type things uh, should be all taking place in one sort of universe. I disagree. I disagree. I think a lot of them are in different universes. I thought that was the entire point. Because you can't sit around and believe that everybody is a superhero. Uh, or you would be like... Um, this is just uh, the stupidest thing ever. So this guy just now he's, I mean, now he's Green Lantern. Don't you agree that there shouldn't be a movie universe where suddenly, you know, the Pulp Fiction guys would run into Goodfellas? Doesn't that seem a little silly to you? Yeah, yeah. That any other? So I would, I, I would think that most of the time you would think to yourself. There's a Spider-Man, not also a Superman and a Batman. You know what I mean? Like, Spider-Man would just be that universe. 
Um, but, you know, I'm not sure Green Lantern is such a, uh, you know, gigantic fucking... I think maybe it's that they're finally running out of this superhero stuff. But do you have a, a problem with Harrison Ford being in, you know, two big uh, Lucas films? Well, you know, I... Uh... If I had to pick one of them, I would keep him as Han Solo. I didn't say you had to pick. I said, do you have a problem? Well, yeah, it, it does. It's like there's Han Solo with a whip. What? Hmm. But when when you're watching, let's say, um, Harrison Ford in that Amish movie, do you ever say there's Han Solo in Amish, Pennsylvania? Or regarding Henry, there's Han Solo as a retard. That one I did think of Han Solo as the retard. No, you know what I thought of Han Solo as the retard is the the second one. The second Star Wars. I just thought he acted retarded. Empire. Um, here is... Um, here is Aaron. Aaron, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, what's up, buddy? Uh, Fez, I gotta agree with you on this one. There you go. I have never watched um, Brokeback Mountain because I don't want to think of um, Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal being faggots every movie is since then. All right, that's a a. I don't agree with the word, and those are different. That's a different time and place. This isn't like the DC or Marvel universe where these characters could run into each other. It is possible, even though it's not going to happen in the film. Uh, here is serious. here is uh, Jimmy. You're running Fez. Oh uh, yeah, and at the end of the Hulk, uh, Tony Stark from Iron Man shows up, and they're in the same same time. I mean, it's two different movies in the same time, and it's pretty cool. So right, that's what I like. But I wouldn't want um, Robert Downey Jr. also playing Mister Fantastic as well as Iron Man. Oh yeah, no way. I agree. Thank I, you. I that part. Yep. Uh, that's because you played gay in that one movie? No. Rob, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, buddies. First day back from vacation, we get a fezzatorial. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it was kind of fezzatorial. You were angry about this. Yeah, and I think Ryan Reynolds is just a bad choice for Hal Jordan the Green Lantern. Because? Hal Jordan is overly serious, and I have the feeling that with Ryan Reynolds, they're going to make this more uh, fun and goofy. Instead of the guy who is a serious superhero, Green Lantern. But you act like, again, that's a stereotype. You are typecasting this young actor because of the roles he's done before. Well, Why I, not give him the benefit of the doubt that he will approach this work and do it? Why can't you wait for the work to be done before you start to attack it? Well, that's what I have to find out. But, you know, he's he's playing the other character, Goofy. What other character? The Deadpool, the Marvel character, the other superhero he gets to be, because apparently he's going to be all of them now. You know there's a limited number of men who are willing to wear tights. There can't be an infinite amount of people who are willing to put on long johns and tell people that they can blow up things with their minds. Um, here is uh, Rocky. Rocky. Yeah. What's up, boys? Um, for one, Ryan Reynolds was already in a comic book movie in Blade. For two, in Wolverine, Ryan Reynolds' character turned into Deadpool, but the actual Deadpool character wasn't played by Ryan Reynolds. It was a different actor playing Deadpool. So he hasn't been Deadpool yet officially. He was His character in the movie was Deadpool, but there was a different actor when it turned into Deadpool that played that character. Right, but he's still the he's still the superhero. Well, not super villain, whatever. But he's the, he, he is still the character. And yes, and he's done the blade thing too. Joe, you're on my face. So hey, blade guys, could go running into Spider Man and Superman and Batman. They're all in the same universe. Well, not the Marvel and the DC. No. Mm. Here is uh, Joe. You're on my face. Hey guys, how you doing? What can we do for you, Joe? Yeah, uh, Fezzy, don't you know that? Uh, Deadpool is a Marvel character, and the Green Lantern is a DC character, and that Fez doesn't know a lot about universes. Marvel. Yes, I understand that it's two different, you know, the two different comic book universes. Do you but, own any Marvel comic books? No, I don't have. No a, further questions, sir. 
You might have stepped up. But I, I said no further questions. I stepped What? Damn it. I heard you mutter. And not only did I hear, I hear you mutter, I heard you fodder. Mike and Nolens, you're on the run of Fezzi. Yeah. Hey, Fezzi. You said that, that Ryan Reynolds' is typecast is only a uh, goofy, kind of, you know, quirky kind of character, right? Well, yeah, have that's what seen, he does. But, but have you ever seen Smoking Aces? No, I have not seen that movie. Okay, before you say that Ron Reynolds is only a goofy, quirky kind of guy, watch that movie, because I guarantee you, he's not goofy and quirky in the movie. He's really serious in the movie, and it's actually a fucking awesome movie, too. But, it seems like you, you know, really stereotyped him. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about, oh, I'm not a stereotype, I'm not a stereotype. You're just lying through teeth. You're the worst kind of stereotype. You're a stereotype okay. that is a victim. What? You're a victim. Uh, Dave in Iowa. Hey, Ron. Hey, racist. Everybody knows it's the country coons that are cool. It's the uptown niggers that will kill you. All right. <laughs> Jesus. See what you it's, started now. Seriously, I that, didn't start that. You this. started it by not going to that bar. Then now your people are calling. Those are not mine. What is the Green Lantern's big power? He takes a lantern with him. Here, I'll help you see. Why, why isn't he then the Green Paul Revere? <laughs> What a fucking lame superhero. Why does he got a lantern with him? To charge his power ring. All right, wherever he goes, he has to take a lantern? Well, the la the lantern stays with him in a different vibrational universe, in a different uh, dimension. What's he mean by that? You don't see the lantern all the time, but yes, it's with him. So where is he carrying it? He's not carrying it. It just kind of goes with him. So it's like a magic lantern. Yes. Like a lamp. And then he... He rubs it and he gets wishes? No, he charges his power ring with it, and then his power ring manifests whatever he thinks of. Hmm. I'm going to create a superhero with a household object. Look at me, I'm the red stapler, everyone. I was going to be blue toaster. <laughs> Looks like some of this bread needs to be toasted. Watch out, blue toaster. I'll staple those papers together for you. Let's just say this. I'm going to throw some toast at you. That's not even a quip. <laughs> oh, it isn't? No. It's not well, even a play on super villain or hero words. Maybe you'd like this bread. It's been lightly browned. That's still not a qu uh, superhero quip. It's not a comic book quip. Perhaps you would like your tuna fish on toast. No, just because you're the blue toaster, not every word uh, that has to do with bread is a quip. Let me remind you this. This turkey club comes with three different pieces of toast. That's not a quip. It's not a threat. It's, it doesn't work. Watch out, Blue Toaster. It's your sidekick here. Magenta Microwave. Oh. I'll make things warm if you need them. One more thing. Would you like some toast? See, that still doesn't work. You're just saying toast and throwing toast. Who wants their tea warmed up? The magenta microwave will do it for you. Maybe you would like a gigantic stack of toast left here. I Just because you put the emphasis on toast and you're the blue toaster, it doesn't work as a comic book quip. I'd like to make a toast. Literally, I'm making toast. Still does not work. Not even though that I did the mic. Um, uh, that I I did. I like to make a toast. Well, that that's better. That's there. Literally, <laughs> toast. I think it's when you repeat it that it takes the the quippiness out of it. I you know who I'd like to play uh, the blue toaster in a movie? Who's that? Batman. Where Batman dresses up in a bat suit. But then he just keeps making toast out of a blue toaster. Why so blue? Have some toast. And this time, this toast is covered in butter and jam. All right. The blue Ew. part works. <laughs> Why yes. so blue? That's totally a quip. That's right there. But the toast part just fell off. Because you're being literal about the toast. You're not using it as wordplay. I don't know whether if you like toast, but I'm going to throw a can at you. Ow! You threw a can at me. Right. And that it wasn't a quip. 
It wasn't? No, it was just throw. You said you were going to throw a can at me, and then what you did was you threw a can at me and hit me in the mouth. Literally. Uh, here's the Daily Leader. Watch out, Blue Toaster. It's the Black Nizzer coming. White people are so scared of black people. Maybe they'd be afraid of all my toast. Get it? No, you're the blue toaster. You would have a lot of toast around. I know what would go perfectly with those eggs. Toast. See, no, right. ma no matter how sinister you say it, it, it's still not a comic book quip. Uh, Chris and P.A., you're on the Run of Foes show. Hi, buddies. Hey, Fessy, I got a question for you, my friend. Are you so sure that uh, Ryan Reynolds can't pull this off? I, I'm gonna, I, I, I have my I'm doubts. Gonna, okay, I'm you gonna have your prejudice. Up. I'm going to back this up now with, with this comment. If you saw Robin Williams back in the 80s and 70s doing his stand-up as well as playing uh, Corky Mork from Mork and Mindy, would you ever, back then... I thought he would have been an Academy Award winner for a drama. No, that would not have been my guess. And see, you got to give the actors the opportunities to prove themselves. Let me make a toast to Ryan Reynolds. Blue toast out of a blue toaster. And now here's my friend, Red Stapler. Do me a favor, Stapler, and staple these... Papers together. Here you go. It's not a quip. For the stapler to actually staple things. Wait, I got a quip. All right. Thanks to Red Stapler, I don't have to worry about any of my papers being thrown about. They'll stay together. Let's go taking the game at the Staples Center, Blue Toaster. See, the idiot's doing quips. Mm. But just saying my papers would be loose, uh, that's not a quip. That doesn't work for a comic book. Mm. Here's uh, Dave in Ohio. Yeah, the blue toaster could go to the dark side. Mm, didn't get it. Well, that's a quip because you can set a toaster for dark. But not just one side. No. Uh, here is Mike in D.C. Ron and Fez, it's Out Your Friend Monday. It's Out Your Friends Monday. It's Out Your Friends Monday. Out Your Friends Monday. It's Out Your Friends Monday. Out Your Friends Monday. Out Your Friends. Out Your Friends. Out your friends. Uh, who, you, who would you like to out today? Uh, my friend. Todd Hillier is gay. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Mike in New Hampshire. You're on the Ron and Fez show. What's going on, buddy? Fez, I, I love you, man, but, you know, for a guy who reads comic books, every time you try to explain what a comic book character does, you, you never do it justice. I do. I Let's just say this. He's not part of the... Justice League. <laughs> Get it? The, the Green I Lantern is, is the best superhero. He's, he, he's got the best power. It's just the average Joe. You get a ring, and then anything you think of, you can do. It, oh, it, my it, gosh. The dissertation you pulled off compared to I, mine. I, see, oh, my God. You should lecture on this, I didn't Tom. understand it until he Mike, explained it to me. My yeah, goodness. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta dumb it down, Fezzy. You know, you get into this, these uh, parallel universes, you lose people. You know, it you is gotta true, Fez. At, you gotta do it. At now I get level. it. I said the exact same thing as him. Oh, come on. Well, let me go back and play what you said before. Okay, please do. The faggot of the opera. All right, that was not what I said before about Green Lantern. This rump ranger. A fudge packer. A cocksucker. The jizz guzzler. What a butt pirate. A the com queen. A tinkerbell. Faggot. Cocksucker. A fudge packer. Faggot. 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 It's out your friends Monday. Out your friends Monday. Out your friends. Out your friends. Let's just say, 
If you don't out me, I'll give you some fresh, warm toast. That's not a quip. That's not, let's just say, that's actually saying it. I don't get it. That's not a let's just say sentence. I think it is. Because you're telling him exactly what you're going to do. There's no sinister double meaning to it. Would you like your toast French? It's delicious with butter and syrup. That's not a Mm. quip. That's just talking about French toast. Yeah, well, you're making it sound like these superheroes are waitresses. Let me put a little more light on this situation. And the green lantern. Uh, Jeff. It's closer. You're on Ron and Fez. Hey, what's up? I want to have my friends. Yeah. What do you got? Randy Brown. Randy Brown. It's Out Your Friends Monday. Out Your Friends Monday. Out Your Friends. Out Your Friends. Friends. This got started when uh, uh, Fezzi uh, took something that somebody um, said to him in confidence and spread it around on the radio. I made a mistake. I misspoke. Hmm. I thought you made a mistake by hanging around with Fagalus. <laughs> I don't have that you can laugh at that. <laughs> that you can laugh well, at that. Well, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> here is, uh, here's our old friend Psycho Bob. Good afternoon, boys. Yeah. I miss Soundboard Toaster. You know, Soundboard Toaster would be good. Uh, Kevin and Pierre, you're on Run of Fez. Yeah, why doesn't the blue toaster uh, toast a villain's buns with his toaster leavings? Would you go that far, Fez? No. Yesterday I was in a diner, and I said also like a cinnamon roll, and the woman came back and said, we're out, but I saw them. Oh, I don't like that one bit. Yeah. Well, it made me think, well, I could tell her, but I'm just going to get a spit roll. I don't those, need it. Those could have been the, the uh, display cinnamon rolls, though. Like plastic? Yeah. Or, or I mean, no, they, they, they cook them once, and then they glaze them over a lot so that they can keep them in, on display forever. You know, I was eating a lot of farm fresh foods, Fuzzy. Oh, yeah? Fucking milk that the cream rolls in, uh... Eggs that, you know, were just hatched, not run through all the fucking thing. Living the life out there on the open road. Living the life. What'd you do, sleep in your old bedroom? Yeah, that's what I did. Think your family exceptional? Um, I'm not sure. Scale one to ten. I, I am so unsure. I would say five. Either way. What do you think it is with his family? Where do you want to uh, be with your family? Two. I think a nine would be nice. I'd like my family to tell me they don't want anything to do with me. Because they don't know my secret identity. Blue Toaster. Perhaps mother and father would like some toast. Get it? Yeah, but it's still not equipped because you're the blue toaster and you're just handing toast. You're saying exactly what you're going to do. Perhaps I'm not equipped to have a quip. So take some toast while you're waiting. You know, make it fun. Right, yeah. Make you, it fun like that. Well, you were there with the quip, but it seems yeah. the problem is when you bring the toast into it. Why do they have to quip? Why can't they just be literal? Because it makes it much more sinister. For so, a, or heroic, I guess, triumphant for so, a hero or a villain to quip. Yeah, so you're saying they both say the same thing, but you give one heroic and the other sinister, and it can't be that. It can be one or the other. The fact that they have the same exact delivery uh-huh. goes to show the limitations of this art form. Speaking of limitations, after the next five minutes, the toaster will be off. So if you want toast, now's the time for toast. Well, I want toast. Yeah, it's not working. Eat it. It's toast. Okay. Yum, yum. Who wants toast? 
I, I do. That is just not working. You're just actually giving people toast. It's <laughs> not a threat at all. But does that make it the eggs and bacon a little more delicious? Oh, all yeah. this toast. It's good. Careful. You might find toast shards. Don't let them get on the tablecloth. Uh, Garth, can I run a toast? Hi, buddies. I'd like to uh, out my friend on Monday. Oh, sure. Uh, my friend's name is the Blue Toaster. <laughs> it's it's out, out your friend's, friend's Monday. Monday. Out, out your friend's, friend's Monday. Monday. Out your friend. Out, out your friend. friend. Oh. Ready, Freddy? What's going on, boys? You doing steady? Oh, you know what? Uh, just kind of curious, Fez, how do you expect your parents to be more than a five, where if you had to grade yourself on acceptability, you're probably a one or a two? Yeah. Oh, I'm much higher than that. I remember the day you said to us, if I could take this secret away, I would. That was one bad day. One bad day and many. You know what makes today a better day? Toast. And plenty of it. All right, we said we would talk about this, uh, and that's big Barack Obama got uh, caught staring at some ass. It was a 16-year-old Brazilian girl who, uh, I'm looking at the pictures here, looks identical to our own Bra- Brazilian Julie. Um, yeah, I get it. Toast. Uh, there she is walking up there. And there's the president and, uh, of course, the president of uh, France, both checking out young ass. The question here is, have you ever, uh, do you ever sneak a peek? Now, not only um, does Chris Stanley sneak a peek, he also watches kiddie shows. What's that TV show that you watch, Chris? Oh, Degrassi. Degrassi Junior High. <laughs> or not the high school. Now they're in high school. I find that alarming. Those young girls are very attractive. And they're of, of age to be in high school, not like older, like Saved by the Bell. So they are underage? Yes. All right, now you see this picture of the president. Were you as bothered by it, uh, Dave? Absolutely not. It, she has all the body parts of a regular chick. Come on. Right. You, can't, you can't do that. Fezzi, where are you on this? Yeah, I was bothered by it. It's a 16-year-old girl. The president is not only looking. I mean, he's turning his head to look. It's not even a glance. It is a deliberate movement to get a look at this girl. Yeah, but she does look very attractive. Oh, yeah. I mean, do we want a president who is not motivated sexually? A stick in the mud, if you will. I think when he's on an official visit and he's standing there next to the president of France, he should probably be keeping his mind on his work. They said in the next picture, he was actually pulling her ass cheeks apart with his thumbs. See, that's not focusing on work. That's focusing on that little asshole that he fucking loves. That's not Adeline either. No. Uh, What's the youngest that you would stare at? I, well, I'm, well, I stare at 15-year-olds. I have no problem with that. There's a, even a show on Bravo called NYC Prep that's all about high schoolers right now, and there's a 15-year-old. Oh, that, that's a reality show? Yeah, and there's a 15-year-old I'm, called Taylor on I, it. I read about that. I want to see it only because it's in my neighborhood. Oh, yeah. it is in your neighborhood, yeah. in fact. Yeah, and uh, this chick called Taylor, she's 15, and forget about it. It's like she's a hotter Phoebe Cates. Mm. And, and and what are you supposed to do? You know what do? you would like? You would like your eyes. You would like a new uh, show called Kid Kid Porn Soup, <laughs> that's out right now. I can host it. Um, here is uh, here's Mark in Philadelphia. Hey, buddy, how are you? Hold on, I'm gonna try to quip with him. Mark, I understand it's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> yes, it is. How's that Listen, this it's quippier. Here's some toast. See, that's what mm. unquips it. Go ahead. This goes, this goes back to, to the Clinton scandal. The actor Jack Nicholson said, if you were worried about a president that would get blown in the office, wouldn't you be more worried about one that wouldn't? I mean, what's wrong with looking? Let's think about it. Um, I got I to agree here. He didn't do anything. He, uh, all right, hold on. 
When you, what is that? YouTube? Yeah, it's the, you, this is the live action of what happened there. All right, if you look at that, he didn't even look at her ass. He was looking for his wife's hand. Well, or or, or, or that that girl. Well, that's not his wife. I don't even know who that is. Oh God, I am the world's biggest racist. <laughs> yeah, that's all not I saw was Obama. Bla- <laughs> all I saw was a black woman. But uh, still, in the live action. Right, let me see shot. that girl's little face too. Oh, uh, she's cute. Yeah, she is. Um, here's uh, TC. What do you got? Hey, buddies. Hey, I think it's socially acceptable to look at girls from age 13 and up. 13 and up. Dave, what do you think? If, uh, they're in eighth grade, yeah. Some 13-year-olds are still in seventh grade. Well, I, here's the thing. I don't think you should be able to hang out in front of a school like Aqualung. No. But I think it would be a lie to say people don't check out other people constantly. You know? Yeah, I mean, we are, are when the, I'm visiting my parents' house, they are across the street from the church. So every Sunday morning, there's always like hot 13, 14, 15 year old girls. So I go out, I play a little bit basketball in the backyard just to look at them. I've been but doing does that anybody for years. in your family know this? Oh, of course not. No, 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 no. Uh, Hicks, does your chick know that you watched Degrassi Junior High? She's sitting <laughs> right next to me and she busts my balls about whatever weird pervert I am. Uh, what'd you do on the vacation track? Once the track lost a bunch of money. Now I'm starting to recognize people there, and they're starting to talk to me. Oh, that's really bad. Oh, the regulars. Yeah, that's really bad. Some guy was telling me he won four grand about 18 years ago, and uh, the best time of his life was a Van Halen concert in, like, 1982. <laughs> Some crazy oh, it's the best bullshit. time of anyone's life. <laughs> if you say to anyone, uh, what was the best day of your life, more or less is going to be a Van Halen show. Yeah, what was wrong with that story? Yeah. The guy you're won making four friends. grand. <laughs> you're, uh, you're meeting people. Brian, uh, in Philadelphia, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, good afternoon, buddy. Yeah. I was, I was wondering, because of that picture, uh, do you think that President Obama's career is now toast? Mm, we don't get it. Let's just say this. If Obama wants a hearty breakfast, have some toast as a side. That's not a quip. I'd like some, though. This toast would help me make a perfect egg sandwich. Mm. That's just suggesting things for breakfast or other meals. That's just the menu yep. suggestions. But it's not quipping. Instead of sandwich, I said sandwich. <laughs> Get it? Still He's not in, a quip. He's in a hurry, though. Sandwich. Have a nice sandwich. Mm-cha, 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 mm-cha.